Okay, welcome to day eight. And this morning I went to Canal Rocks again. It was one of those average sunrises. And um, because of that, uh, I had to think long and hard about what I was going to shoot. So I decided to go um, to Canal Rocks because I knew that I could uh, get some shots looking down and I don't have to worry about the, the sky and how good or bad that will look. So I've gone there and with my drone and shot a whole bunch of stuff and came up with a couple of images um, that I like. So this is one of them. Let's have a look at this. I've done a pretty basic edit out of um, uh, Camera Raw. Just did all the important things like the sharpening and the chromatic aberration adjustment and just got the highlights where they should be in the shadow areas, obviously. So here's the image. and this was shot uh, at, I think, one second. Um, but you can see that obviously the drone has uh, moved and it's blurred the shot. But I've taken lots of shots. And there's one there that actually is as sharp as anything. So this is the base layer. I've put the one with the better water on the top. And, I'm just, and I've lined them. So basically, I've just selected both layers and gone up to edit auto align layers and that's put them in perfect registration so you can see if i take it on and off it's almost almost perfect pretty close close enough jazz so what i'm going to do is add a layer mask i'm going to invert that and then i'm just going to use a, a brush a white brush and with 100 percent opacity zero on the keyboard and get this looking kind of cool. You could just rub that water back. And obviously I've got to be careful not to go too much over those rocks because then I'm going to, and the jetty, I'm going to end up um, getting the blurry rocks. So it's a bit of a, um, you know, uh, well, you can be a little bit inaccurate and because I'm, it's my son's birthday today, so I should be doing other things and editing photos. And um, I get this done, get it out of the way, and then we can celebrate. But yeah, roughly, I'm going to go and use my Wacom tablet. And I'll zoom in in a minute, just get those finer details. But just want to get the, the main stuff done. If you click on the, um, let's see. Why do you do that Photoshop? The mask, you can see where you, you haven't quite gone yet. So you just get the bulk of it done. And then we'll go back in and do the finer stuff. So let's zoom in a bit. We'll get around here. I'll bring the brush down a bit smaller. And get in to there. But be careful not to... Mm -hmm. make that jetty fuzzy that's the last thing we want to do let's make the jetty fuzzy which is possible um, get out of the way okay see where I'm just make sure you don't create some sort of weird line you can, what you can do is you can bring your brush, make your brush much smaller. Find a spot where you want to start. Click once, hold the shift key out and then click between it. And then you can just draw a line back and forwards there and, and then you'll get a nice straight edge. Same thing along here. And then that will fix up any, any issues that you may or may not come across. And um, make it perfect. Same thing over here. Click once. Actually, that's got a lot of weirdo sort of railing on there, so I might just be a little bit mindful of that. And then get a little bit closer. Get these areas. Well, this is going to be a little bit of a problem, but just a little bit 
careful what I do around here. Ultimately, it's it's moving water, so. But the good thing is you don't have to be um, super accurate because uh, the moving water is moving water. I mean, I can go back with my brush tool um, and change the to a black brush, drop my opacity, and then just blend this through. Might be an easier way to work than than trying to you know get right in there. Same over here. Just um, blend that through a little bit. Although that looks a bit ugly there, so let's get that. But you know, you get the idea, right? Looking at all this stuff, we're in pretty close. So, yeah, we're just going in and filling in the lengths. Just like so. And once we've got this where we want, then we will go in and we'll do a more of a general edit to make it all look kind of nice. So, yes, just kind of get on the edge there. Unless it's part of that water, then it's good. Just don't want to go over the rocks. You can kind of see where you've missed because it's a different colour blue. It's kind of more of a blacky browny blue. So just going to clean up along there a little bit. And yeah, uh, see how how we go there. Let's um don't want to make that you gotta be careful you don't make those uh rocks let's see fuzzy. You just gotta be a little bit mindful of that. Just keep it nice and sharp. I mean this might be better. Some of this could be Better the way it was originally. Blending that through like that. Okay, um, close, close, close. So anyway, now we've got the nice moving water and we've got the sharp rocks. So let's flatten that. Let's call it something. We're going to save it. Let's Canal rocks twenty three forty five oh two three four five oh hmm MV three Mavic Pro three and click save. It's a number that I'll never remember and always be uh, annoyed when I have to try and type it out too many. And anyway, this is what happens. I've got tens of thousands of images now. Okay. Um, okay, so now I need to clean up those edges, and that's as easy as going Command A, Command T, and let's just pull this out a little bit here, and the same thing down there. We'll just clean up everything, something like that. Command D, deselect, and there is our starting point. Save it. So the next thing is going to work out what we want to do. I'm going to look at the where what my histogram is telling me, and it's telling me that it's got mostly mid tones to dark tones, and um, that's okay. But I, I want to actually kind of go dark on this one and create a more atmospheric lighting. So let's go Command J to duplicate the layer. Image apply image. This is my old favorite. Click on. The red channel and we'll, let's do an invert click on mask click on red there and invert there um actually do i need to do that in invert no i don't invert sorry don't tick that box basically this will be um you see it makes it grungy but it also doesn't make it too dark click okay 
And we're going to add a layer mask. Beef brush. Black is our foreground color. 50% opacity. It's going to bang the light into the middle where we want it, where it's actually the darkest. Something like that. Keep that dark. Let's just feather this off a bit. Like that. I want our water to be nice. So let's turn that on and off. So that's just controlling that edge there, making it not so so dire. Um, let's have a look at creating um, a bit of light. Let's look at color and light at the same time. So we'll go do a uh, look up and um, look at some of my old favorites. Now something that's going to make those rocks a little bit nicer. And it's not that. This one will make it pretty red. Too red. Um, red saturation. What it does to the water makes the water nicer. So maybe we'll just keep that just for the hell of it. Let's put a new one on. And um, creamy split toning. No, yuck. Yuck, 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 arm blues. No, don't want to do that one. Skin tone. No. What else have we got? Brown town that makes the rocks. Takes the orange out. Makes them all a bit kind of yellowy. It's kind of nice, but it's not, it's not quite right, I don't think. Or is it? Well, once we get that water back, so let's go peep brush, 100% opacity. Let's just bring our water back for starters. And then we look at it. Yeah, I don't mind it, actually. Got some pretty good contrast between the, the colors there. Um, and let's do... Um, a curve, hit the option and hold the option key to and click on auto. And that will add us a fair bit of light through there, which is enhancing brightness and contrast. But obviously, possibly blowing out those highlights or making them look a little bit. So if we click OK, invert it, and then create a brush, white brush, and we're just going to tap that in. A few places around here. It's a little bit dark. Mainly there. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, that's good. It's a bit more interesting light there. It's making it kind of pop out a bit. Let's go back to the original. Okay, and look, I mean, look how dark it looks in the middle. That looks... So much better when it's like that. But I think we can do better than that. Let's go do another curve. This time we'll just change the blend mode to screen. Invert it. Get a white brush. 30% opacity. And let's just pick up some of these brighter areas of the rocks make them stand out in the background jetty could probably do with a bit of a uh, fix up as well so i'm just going over all these just you know, pretty roughly just trying to add a little bit more light to those light areas and we'll see if that looks good let's just turn it on on and off and just see if if we think that's worthwhile yeah well look how much it pulls them forward gives it that sense of sense of depth so you know it's definitely worth giving it a bit of a uh, Bit of a red hot go.
and obviously do the same over on this side. You don't want to We're just adding more light to what's already there. And some of these darker ones could probably do with a a, a nicer bit more light there just to kind of bring them forward as well. You want to kind of balance both sides out a bit. It's pretty dark this little corner because it gets a lot of water. It was a big swell today, it was awesome. So it goes to show you you can fly your drone at um, slow shutter speeds and um, still get sharp results it's amazing really when you consider what it, what it's doing and um, so give it a give it a try next time you're out shooting with your drone you don't have to get perfect uh, shutter speeds all the time this is kind of fun you know just to be able to do this and it just gives you a, a different perspective yeah. there we go so that's starting to look pretty good yeah. and you can go on doing this for forever if you like um, and if we zoom in a bit more and using the same brush but very small like so 100% opacity. Let's just draw this railing in. Look at that. Make it stand out. And um, you know, this is it. We're doing this at 100%, so it should it shouldn't be a problem. Let's just zoom out and turn that on and off now. Yeah, that's better because it needs to needs to stand out a little bit. It's good to um do these things. There's a hundred percent. So click once, hold the shift key down, put the cursor where you want the line to go to, and click again while still holding the shift key down. And good having straight lines to work with. This one looks a little bit curved. So you just do shorter distances, try and follow the curve along. Oopsie, it's going to be a problem, isn't it? That gets in the way. All these little refinements will add up to a more interesting image. in my honest opinion. This is a little bit curved as well for some reason. It must have maybe there is a bit of a curve in there. Can't remember. So yeah we're just gonna we're just drawing those lines in with with a whole stack of light and it makes quite a bit of difference. So I'm pretty happy with that. This got washed away last winter, I think, this, this uh, boardwalk. Let's have a look. See, now that's refined it a bit more and defined it only slightly. I mean, I could probably go in and hit this jetty up a bit more, but I'm not going to this on this occasion. Um, Okay, let's go back. Let's put a little border on it. Ah, oh, let's see. I have to flatten it before I get that. Well, I'm kind of happy with that. Let's save it. Let's flatten it. Let's add a little border. Oh, Christ. Sorry. You can flatten things, but they're not really flattened until it's really flattened. <laughs> Don't ask me why Photoshop does these things, but it seemed um, that wasn't supposed to happen. 
put our border around it. Okay, that's just the um when we look at it like this, let's go to our before and after so we can go to our history and go back to oh we can go right back to the start. Um that's before. That's after. Well that's the best way to do it is just do a snapshot and then you can go before after here. Before after before after. I think doesn't look too bad. Um, it's not cheesy. Let's go back, 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 back. Gee, I did this a few times, didn't I? The hell? Oh, oopsie. <laughs> I'm just going back to the snapshot. My bad. Okay, there we go. Save it again. I mean, I might do a little bit of refinement with the color. Uh, just, you know, I'll have to sit with it for a bit, look away, come back, and then decide whether I, I need some other adjustments made. Uh, the first thing I would look at maybe is the selected color and look at what's happening with the yellows. Make it, I want to make it a bit warmer, or do I want to make it a bit more, you know, neutral? Um, same with the reds. Do I want more red in there or less red? Do I want it to be kind of almost a little bit mono to get rid of any cheery cheesiness? I'm thinking that it needs to be more yellow, but maybe not that bad. Um, so maybe um, a 50% opacity on that layer. It's basically just desaturated a little bit. No, it's a little bit more yellow. Hmm. Well, who knows? You could just spend all day doing this. The other option is, well, why don't we just try and brighten the whole bloody thing up, see what it looks like as a postcard. Yay, 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 yay. Nasty. The water looks nice. Alright, I kind of like that water, but let's go not too hot. Invert it and then just brush the water in with a white brush. That's nicer. Gives it a much nicer feel. Makes it a bit more rich. Okay, I like it, and I reckon that is just about a wrap. Well, actually, no, I can see one thing. Command A, Command T, hold down the Shift key, grab that handle, and just get rid of those little distracting elements. Let's select. Hmm. There it is. Good to go.